Joy TV. I have a special guest joining me today for Journey Time, which is where we talk about people's journeys, kind of like story time, but with Journey Time. So, Lachina Robinson, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Hannah. I feel so honored. Thank you. For, so, she's actually the first uh, official guest now that I've officially launched, and I gotta say, this woman right here is incredible, and I'm truly honored to have you here today. Oh, man, that means a lot to me. I don't know if I deserve those words, but it's truly... Yes. In honor to be one of your first guests. I'm so excited for everything you have going on. It's dope. Thank you. I'm trying to, trying to get like you. You know how to be like, no, I'm trying to get like you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get like her. <laughs> so she is the founder of Stretch Beyond and she's a basketball analyst. She's been all over. So just to kind of give people an idea of some of the work maybe that you do, can you talk about some of your day to days, what you do as a basketball analyst and as an entrepreneur who runs your own organization? Yeah, everything I really do is rooted in um, my love of the game of basketball. Um, and my desire to help women and you know as a young girl I was 6'4 at the age of 14 and it wasn't until I stepped on the basketball court that I really felt like I belonged anywhere in the world and so um, the game changed my life I went on to Wake Forest to play there and just got a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise so I've always had a desire to give back to basketball and um, after a short stint of thinking I was going to be an athletics director I found that place to give back in broadcasting, um, starting my 10th season on college basketball on air, and I think my 11th year is what I just finished for WNBA. So um, that's the basketball side of the house. But then um, my company, Stretch Beyond, as you mentioned, uh, was born out of a desire to help student athletes, right? Being a student athlete myself, uh, I was always interested in development, and that's character development, career development in terms of your aspirations after sport. Um, and also your community presence. And that's where it started, but it's kind of morphed into a lot of different things. And ultimately, I'm in a space where I'm still helping student athletes, um, but also women as well. That is so awesome. I love everything that you're doing. One thing you did just say, though, you were 6'4 at age 14. Mm -hmm. What was that like, you know, as a teenager? I don't know, were there any challenges presented? Or did you, you said you didn't really feel like you fit in until basketball, women's basketball. What was that journey like for you? Oh, I had zero confidence, you know, low self-esteem. I got teased because I was always the tallest person. I was almost like taller than most of my teachers at one point. Um, you know, wore a size 13 shoe. And so uh, as a kid, you don't really embrace the things that make you unique. Sometimes you hide from those things. Um, but my mom was always the person that said, sit up straight and it's, t it's beautiful to be tall. And uh, I started to embrace that later in life, but it, it was hard as a young person and really had to rely a lot on my mom to, to help me through those times. Having those people around you, you know, whether it's teammates, family members, you know, what can you say to someone who may be struggling in that area about being able to lean on those around you? Yeah, I think one thing is the transparency that it takes sometimes, sharing of our pain. Um, pain is not a pleasant place, right? But we all experience it, whether it's through tragedy or trauma or just the growth of life. And so uh, our willingness to share that and to encourage each other through those times because we've all been there. Um, I would li I'd like to believe that God gave me the gift of encouragement. I'm just a naturally positive, optimistic type person. Um, and so I, I seek out opportunities to do that, but I think we can all be better and being in tune with each other, saying, how are you? How can I help you? Um, and I, I think that's what makes this world such an amazing place is we every day have a chance to help someone else through something. That is so powerful. So, you, you know, you talked about going from Wake Forest to Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like for you? Because you, you didn't necessarily want to stick in college athletics and on the, on the administration side, but you were still doing it. And I know you from Georgia Tech. I've met her. She is a legend. And people talk about you because you came in and you gave it 110%. And so what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, I would say that when I was in my 20s, I really didn't know who I was, right? So I kind of uh, lived every day doing what I felt like I wanted to do, um, but wasn't in tune with who I really was. And so on the way to finding myself, uh, you know, there were just several different turning points, Georgia Tech being one of them. You know, I had the honor of uh, right after I left Wake Forest, I got an internship at the ACC, which was great for me, and went straight to Georgia Tech. So I learned under, under Michelle Joseph and Mary McElroy, and later on Teresa Wenzel, who's a mentor to both of us. 
uh, Paul Griffin. And, um, you know, it, it was really about showing up every day. It was something I really learned as a student athlete, something I learned being a part of the ACC. What you mentioned in terms of giving 110%, like that was not even an option for me. <laughs> and that's one of the first things that I tell the student athletes. I'm like, you have a great advantage in this world because we are consistently told every day you show up, no matter how you feel, you play your role. Um, but there was still a process of figuring out what made me unique um, and how I could sell myself and my brand um, in, a, in a crowded market. And now you're taking some of those experiences that you learned from and passing it on, you know, through your company Stretch Beyond and even your new project that you're working on, which I'd love to hear about in a few minutes here. Um, but why did you feel the need to really present those opportunities and that um, sort of guidance for young student athletes and, and also female student athletes? Yeah, I'm really uh, passionate about transition spaces, right? Because to me, transition times in our lives are where we are most vulnerable, whether that's going from being a college student to the real world, or that moment that you make up your mind that you want to go from good to great, or I want to go from being an assistant coach to a head coach. Like those transition spaces are often where we need the most support. And so um, I kind of look at the student athlete experience as a transition usually come in, you're 17 to 18 years old, you graduate, you're 21, 22. Um, there's a great opportunity to grow as a person, but you don't always focus on that. And I didn't focus enough on that. Like I was like, okay, I'll get good grades and I'll play basketball. But um, there's a lot of work to be done on ourselves, self-realization, um, what, what makes us unique, how to package ourselves. So uh, that transition space is something that's intriguing to me. And um, so I, I wanted to create something where I could help people through that. And that then led to the transition coach. Yeah, yeah. So through my company, Stretch Beyond, um, which has taken on in the 10 years, I can't believe it's been 10 years since I started the company, it's taking on a lot of different forms. And that's one thing I tell people is allow yourself to evolve in terms of what your passions are, what you feel like your purpose is, like who I was and what I wanted at 21, 22, 23. Yeah, I based my major on that. You know, I put a lot of time into who I thought I was gonna be, but at some point it changed. Um, and I allowed it to do that. My company's been, been the same way. And, um, you know, started out just wanting to, again, help student athletes as I got a hold of this transition theory, um, kind of pegged myself as the transition coach. Uh, you can follow on Instagram if you're not already. Uh, so again, just creating another platform, you know, T.D. Jakes, I was listening to him yesterday. I love mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes. I and, love him too. Um, I know we're both women of faith, but T.D. Jakes was just saying, oftentimes we allow the world to give us labels of this one thing that we're supposed to do when actually we're multifaceted, mm -hmm. we have a number of gifts, and so my company is just another avenue to, um, you know, express my, my purpose. Congratulations on the new venture uh, of your company and all that you continue to do in this world. And I am so grateful to know her personally. I'm gonna share a quick story here, but uh, maybe five years ago, I connected with her, asked to meet for coffee. She made the time to meet with me for coffee and literally sat me down, gave me all this advice about the broadcast industry and asked me if I knew what a reel was. At that time, I had no idea. It's kind of like a running joke now because <laughs> you need a reel to get a job you know, in the TV industry. But I'm just so grateful that you made the time to sit with me that day and have a cup of coffee. and. You know, not everybody does that, but how do you make the time to do that? How do you encourage other people? Maybe they're not in broadcast, maybe they're a lawyer, maybe they're a doctor, maybe they're a male woman or a male man. You know, how do they make the time and create those opportunities to give back the way you did with me? Yeah, I mean, so many people did it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was life changing, it was game changing in terms of what I've been able to do in my life and in my career, all the mentors that I've had. and so. Um, there's a desire, just a burning desire to give back. No matter what I accomplish in my career, um, there's no better feeling than helping someone else achieve their dream. And that's kind of where I am in my life right now. It's like my broadcasting career, I mean, God has taken me way beyond anything I ever thought I would do in this field, right? Like I am a college basketball player who never played in the NCAA tournament. Um, never played in the WNBA, have zero gold medals. And so what God has done and the places he's taken me are far beyond what I ever really thought I, where I thought I would be. So now on the second part of my life, it's really about helping other people. And I see so much 
talent, so much promise. I mean, your your spirit, Hannah, is amazing, and Thank God you. is going to do something so incredible in your life. And me sitting with you that day is a very, very <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny part of you know what you build and what you'll go on to do. And so it, it was truly my honor to even share that space with you, and um, definitely watch you as you continue to blossom. Do you see how humble she is and amazing? I mean, you're just all around fierce, wonderful, kind. Who motivates you? Who empowers you? You know, maybe talk about some mentors and leaders in your life. Yeah, wow. I, I joke that I have so many mentors and many of them I've never even asked. I just kind of <laughs> like, I need your help. Or, you know, some you watch from afar. But, you know, someone I look up to is definitely my mom. And she's been through so much in her life and she continues to just I'm in awe of her every day, of her strength, of you know how polished she is. And my mother is so smart, just a brilliant woman, strong in her convictions. Um, so it, it kind of started at home for me. But um, you know, when I look in the media world and you see Robin Roberts, or you know, you see a um, Carolyn Peck, who was the first to come before me. You know, I, I watched Carolyn win a national championship and go on to work at ESPN, and um, she met with me the way I met with you. So, it, you know, it's those women, it's those moments. Um, but I got to have a ton of mentors. Like, I, I, even on the athletic administration side, I remember one of the women, um, Bernie McGlade, when I first went to the ACC, I was like, whoa, like, she walked by and the wind started blowing. So, <laughs> you know, and, and Teresa, who we both share. So it's just been, um, along the way, so much help. It, I'm a lot, it takes a lot of work for me, <laughs> a lot to get me anywhere in life. Like it's taken the, the efforts of a lot of people. Hope you're enjoying this conversation. Well, obviously you've seen, we've touched on a wide range of topics. Now I kind of want to get a little personal. So I'll keep it real. I am 28 and I'm single and I'm loving my life. I'm loving my journey. And I also see around me that, you know, some of my friends are getting married and having children and all that. Kind of stuff and so for you you know you are a strong independent woman and you woman and you make that clear just by being the person that you are so can you open up a little bit about your personal life and maybe offer some you know guidance on people who are in their late 20s who are trying to figure it out yeah you know one thing i always tell women in their late 20s is uh, you can chase your career and work on your personal life at the same time <laughs> i was one of those who probably focused um too much on my career, if that's possible, and I always said, oh, you know, the getting married and kids and all that will happen at some point, like not really realizing that you can balance. Um, so my first piece of advice is, depending on, you know, what's important to you, what is pulling your heartstrings at whatever part of life you're in, um, allow yourself to spend time in those areas. Like I wish I would have dated more in my 20s and I was always like, I gotta go to work, I gotta do this, I gotta get this meeting. Like I showed up for my my work life. I didn't show up for my personal life. Um, but I have had, you know, some great relationships along the way. I think um, the biggest thing is on the, on the, I guess, negative side of what I've seen behavior, uh, excuse me, relationships do to people. I would just say if there's something in your life, if there's someone in your life that is keeping you from being able to focus or making you not feel good about yourself or is not encouraging or is discouraging to what you want to do in your life or your dreams, that's not the person for you. You know, like too many times I see women in their 20s because they're putting pressure on themselves to get married, to be in a relationship, accepting less than what they deserve. You deserve the world, queen, okay? Let me just say that. So, um, you know, I hate to, to speak on the negative side of behaviors because there's so many of relationships because there's so many positive things that come out of relationships. But I think in your 20s, sometimes we're more vulnerable, um, you know, maybe not ready to stand up for what we deserve, but uh, never let a relationship take you down the wrong path. No one deserves to have that kind of control. That right there, that's quotable, write that down. <laughs> I love that, I love that. So what about some maybe more general advice to anybody watching, you know, um, anybody maybe going through something or maybe transitioning, you know, going through a new phase in life, um, based on your journey, what can you share with others to hopefully help them um, maybe, maybe get through something that they're going through along theirs? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, because I kind of function in that transition space, my mm -hmm. advice, 
first and foremost is my favorite quote, which is, uh, don't be afraid to go out on a limb because that's where the fruit is. Um, if you're thinking about a career aspiration, if you have a dream, if there's something that you wanna do, a burning desire, it's going to take so much faith, so much trust in yourself and the people around you and God, um, but that's where you find um, the most fulfillment, you know? That's where you get that fruit, is when you're willing to stretch yourself, right? If my company stretch beyond um, and grow, and there's pain with that, and there's discomfort. Um, but, you know, I can remember when I was getting into broadcasting, I mean, I had no communications degree, no broadcast degree, I've never been on camera, yet I was showing up to places like trying to convince people that like, this is what I need to be doing, right? So I was way out on that limb, and God was faithful and bought me the fruit. But take a chance, like, you have nothing to lose. Don't live life every day miserable doing something you're not passionate about, you don't care about, uh, you know, find your way. So I would say that, that's, that's my first quote. And then the other thing I think is really pertinent for the times we're living in right now, uh, my other favorite quote is, um, stand for something or fall for anything. And I think in particular for women, uh, we've got to use our voices, you know, like there's so much going on in the world right now, whether it's pay equity or, you know, the leadership in our country and how women are viewed and how that trickles down. Like we have to unite, be strong, build each other up, uh, encourage each other, not be afraid of the moment, apply for a job that maybe you may not think you're qualified for, you know, lift another woman up in your organization. There's so many ways for us to help each other, to build each other. And I just think the time is now. We got to stand for something. Um, so I, I'm really passionate about that as well. I love that. I love that. We're probably going to wrap it up with that because I mean, that's just, it's simple things in life that you can do and you can do them with grace and you can do them with love as you just mentioned and just supporting your community and lifting each other up. Thank you for, for hitting on those points. Now I do want to ask you just to sort of wrap it up with this channel and this new project that I, I've launched. It's all about promoting positivity across the world. So wherever you are in this world, hopefully you've gained some of that. Maybe you've gained a lesson or two, maybe some advice, but maybe final words on why you choose to promote positivity. Man, I found out very early that my purpose was to live to inspire. And that's um, what I live by. It's my name on Instagram, it's right. a hashtag. We all have the ability to inspire, even if it's just one person, right? We worry so much about how many followers we have and how many people of influence we're connected to. None of that matters when you think about the value of being able to impact and inspire one life. So I just challenge everyone to take on that responsibility of inspiring at least one, uh, one other person in our lives. And if we do that, we've had impact. Well, you've certainly inspired me today and every day since I've met you. And as she said, her Instagram is literally lives to inspire and she does live to inspire. So make sure to follow her, make sure to stay in touch. I'll have information on how you can keep in touch with her, but maybe if you can share that as well, maybe your handles and your website, so just that they have it. Yeah, um, you can find me at LachinaRobinson.com. That's my website on Instagram, Lives to Inspire, on Twitter at LaChina Robinson. So that's it. Really simple. Well, thank you so much oh, for being one of my first guests. I'm so proud of you. This is dope. Yes, congratulations. Happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. Continue all the great work you're doing. Got you. <laughs> Women like you have paved the way. So thank you for tuning in. I hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it. And there's a lot more to come. We're going to be hearing from so many amazing, wonderful people just like to little China out here in this world, making it a better place. So make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, make sure to share with your friends and tune in. Until next time, we'll see you soon.